What's up guys, it's me Kevin and today we'll be looking at a way to deploy your Python application to the cloud. So we'll be using a free service called Python Anywhere as a free tier which allows you to put a Flask application, a Python application to the cloud and anyone could access your website. So let's just jump right in and deploy our application. So today we're checking out Python Anywhere. So what Python Anywhere allows you to do is to host and run your Python code online so basically you could allow other users to check out your python code or your python web application that you build and you can use it as a portfolio or some kind of automation that you want done and what's really awesome about this is python anywhere allows you to host it for free at least there's a free tier we we'll could check out the pricing in a bit and but yeah so you could for example host a flask application a django application and it's, it's really easy to set up. We'll go through that uh, during the tutorial. One thing I want to show you before that is it's batteries included, which means it has all these versions of Python installed and it has a lot of the common libraries that Python uses installed like NumPy, uh, SciPy, and we could check out a pretty extensive list right here. And as you can see, there's so many different um, libraries that come pre-installed with Python anywhere so you won't you don't you don't have to install these um, yourself let's just search flask so you can see that a lot of the flasks uh, modules that you need is already pre-installed and we could look at it Django has a lot installed as well so basically it just has you know so many libraries already installed and you don't need to need to do any configuration with that so let's check out the pricing so as I said, there's a free version that you could begin with. And of course, there's also different tiers depending on what kind of um, you know, application you want and what, how much capacity. But let's just focus on the free tier right now. Here's a comparison chart. Basically with the free tier, you can have one Python application and you basically whatever your username is, uh, .pythonanywhere.com, that will be the URL to access your web application, your website. You cannot, unfortunately, you cannot have a custom domain. So this is the domain that you're stuck with if you choose the free tier. But of course, if you upgrade, you could customize it to whatever you want. You, you're also allowed to run two consoles at the same time. And consoles are basically terminals. So you can have a you know, bash terminal and, for example, Python terminal. You could have one daily task that you could use to execute um, you know, um, cron jobs, which basically schedule tasks to, to run at a certain time. What you get is also 100 seconds of CPU allowance, which means basically when you do something in the bash and you run a, a execute some kind of command, for example, that command might take, you know, half a second. That means this will go down by half a second. So that's like the processing power you get for one uh, day. And this is, yeah, this is a daily allowance. And then you also get half a gigabyte of file storage with the free tier. So let's uh, log in. I'll log in and we'll look at the rest. So once you log in, you could go to my dashboard right here. And this is what you first see when you, when you log on. So you could actually see the CPU usage, what we talked about. Um, I'll reuse some of that, but and this resets um, daily. And then it also shows the file storage that you still have left right now. It's barely using any. Here are the consoles that you could start. So these are the terminals, basically console is just another word for terminal. You know, you could get a, a Linux bash terminal up and running a Python terminal. This is where you could browse the, the files. Unfortunately for a free tier, there's no Jupyter notebooks. So you will need to upgrade if you want that. And also web apps. So let's start and actually make a web app. So we'll make a Flask application. So this is the starting screen right here, and we will add a new web app. Basically, this uh, yeah, this will be the URL in, in my case. So that's my username, and whatever your username, that's what's going to be right here. Let's just click Next. So here you're allowed to pick which Python web framework you want to use. I want to use Flask. Um, as you can see, there's many available. Django, I mentioned already, Web2Py, Bottle, you can have a manual configuration. I'm most familiar with Flask and Django, and Flask is the more uh, simple one to set up, so let's jump in with that. 
and you can pick the Python version. Let's just pick the latest. And as you can see, this is where the, the file will be placed. This is the directory of your Python Anywhere server. The, by default, it will put it in something called my site directory and flask underscore app. But let's just call it app. I usually just like to name that my flask applications app.py. Let's continue. And now it's ready. So now it's all set up. Let's look into some details. So yeah, one thing is with the free tier, you will need to basically say that you run it. We want to run this application for three months from today, because if you don't press this button, it will kind of shut down your server. You won't lose any of your data, but you won't be able to access your web application. So just, you know, every two, three months, just come in here and press this and that's all you need to do. Um, it shows some traffic information, how many people have access to your website. Shows you where the source code is. This is the directory where um, the Flask application code is. The my site directory, as I mentioned. Here is the virtual environment. So, so you could have a custom virtual environment. You could set that up. But there's also the batteries included on um, things that you already have available on Python anywhere. It's best to use that because the, actually once I tried to use the custom virtual environment, the only drawback of that is that takes from your from your allowed space that you have the half a gigabyte you get from Python anywhere and um, virtual environments can get pretty big pretty fast so it's best to just use the batteries included uh, libraries here are the logs that you could check out if something's wrong if you, you know if your website is down for some reason or you know there's some kind of error then you just go here and check it out and then you're you're able to fix your code static files so this is where you could serve static front-end files. So let's say you have a Flask application, you could use that as the back-end, and you could communicate with the front-end with uh, REST APIs. And you could set up that front-end right here, you just upload the static files, and you could have a React or Angular or Vue.js uh, front-end. And you just use that and build the production code for your JavaScript files, and then you upload that right here. And then you basically have a full stack web application. There's some security settings. You could force the HTTPS and you could also have password protected uh, website. So only you or whoever knows the password could access it. And of course, if you, you could remove your web app if you don't want it. Let's look into where the web application was created for us. So you could go into files. It's in the my site directory. And app.py. So here it is. This is our Flask application that was generated for us. Now let's make uh, some changes to it, and we'll see how that how that could be seen on the the live website. Well, actually, let's check out the the website. So this is the URL uh, for me, Kevin Tech Dev, and PythonAware.com. And as you can see, the hello from Flask is displayed, which is coded right here. So what we could do is add some changes. We can add a new route. Uh, let's just call it example. So route and return. Yeah, example route. Here. You can save that. And once that's saved, let's go to a website and we could say example route so it says not found and the reason is because you need to reload the web application so if you go back here to the dashboard and to the web con configuration we could click here and reload and we'll see and once it's reloaded then it basically it loads up the uh, code and puts it live on the on the live server so let's run it now. Oh, okay, so something went wrong. So go right here and there's some debugging tips. And basically it says to check the, the error messages. And that's the best place to go if you have some kind of error. So let's go to the error logs. These are the older logs up here. You could check the timestamp. So these are the latest right here. And it says error running application line 12. Oh, it's missing a quotation. So let's go back to the code and fix that. Let's go back here. Let's go to files, 
jump right into my site and app.py and it actually shows it right here so syntax error so we fix that we put a quotation and now let's save it now the syntax error little icon goes away and once we go let's refresh the web application on the web tabs reload and once that's reloaded we can go back from the, away from the logs and run this again and as you can see the example route that we created works and it shows the code it shows that string that we coded right here and it works so that's how that's a simple tutorial on how to configure a flask application in python anywhere let's look at a couple more things in the dashboard so as i mentioned earlier in the video there's some things that are called tasks so these are scheduled tasks that you could you could um, run um, just a certain time during the day so basically you just have to create a script and point to that script right here into the that's that's a script somewhere in the files directory and you just create that and it'll schedule which whenever the time that you specify right here on the free tier you could have one scheduled task running and you could also have a database so we could check that out here so you could have a mysql database in the free tier you could create you'll have to create a password for that and initialize this the database the postgres is um, not available in the free tier so you have to go and upgrade for that i'll show this in a later tutorial how to set this up and we could check out the console as well so let's start up a bash console so this is really awesome because it basically emulates a console or a terminal in the browser so let's run some linux commands we could see ls so we could see the content of this directory you actually print the working directory so this is the home directory under our user and we could go into the my site directory right here and we see the cat the pycache files and also the app.py file print that out on screen as you can see this is what we edited in the file editor we could actually edit in the terminal we could use nano which is a built-in editor in the terminal let's edit this so what we could do is make a simple change to the return value of this route so I made some changes in the terminal let's go and exit with control X yes we want to save and overwrite this file I'll just clear the console and let's print that out as you can see the changes are here so we go back to our dashboard and we will reload the web application once that's reloaded we'll see the changes live on our website so let's go here let's refresh and as you can see the changes are here that we made from the terminal so what you can do is even not use the file editor but use the terminal within the python anywhere uh, built-in terminal or what you can do um, I'll probably show this in a later tutorial but you could set up a pretty nice workflow where you have the code hosted um, the file the code in the files hosted on a github repository and you know you edit on your code editor for example vs code and then you upload to you push to that central repository on github and you also set github here in, in the console and then you pull that code and you basically just do what we always do is go to the web and reload the web application and then you just reload the newly pulled code and that's a really nice work workflow to basically um, deploy and host your code on Python anywhere because uh, you know more more experienced um, developers will definitely probably enjoy you know just using their usual code editors instead of coding into in the browser because that could be a bit slow at times um, but yeah this is what I wanted to show you so Python anywhere is a really awesome uh, resource to host your Python application you can make a really nice um, portfolio website or do you know some automation or whatever you need for yourself and it's it's really awesome so definitely check out you know it's free the free tier is actually really good at, you know it doesn't limit you with with um, you know traffic or anything just the, the amount of room that you have on the server and the
the CPU allowance, but that's not that bad either for set daily. So definitely check out Python anywhere if you want to host your Python code for free. So that's that's basically it for this video. That's what I wanted to show you. Just drop any questions you have in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer it and you know reach out on Instagram if you have any more questions. I hope you liked this uh, video and you learned a lot from the tutorial and you know you basically were introduced to Python anywhere. And I'll see you next time.